Hey, uh, going live today with an amazing woman, Renee Marie, who owns Pretty Packers in Palm Coast. And we're gonna do a little show and get to know her. So give me a second here. Boom, boom. Okay, she's in. And now we're waiting for her request to join to go live. Hey, 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 oh, hey. Goodness, I have to find my glasses. Hold on. You that was did. very easy. Well, <laughs> it's it's easy because we, we it took four, three times. We got it. I knew we'd get it. Yeah, but none of that was happening before. It's okay. So well, maybe it was because it has to be the personal. And my apologies that we, we could have did do we could have done a dry run. But like I said, we don't. I'm not doing this live to like get oh like get a viewers now. Oh, you're sideways, girl. Come on now. I'm trying. Let's to... go, boomer. Come on. Hold on. <laughs> I think I have to fix it. <laughs> Hold on. I just found my, st I found a phone stand. <laughs> People are going to think you're going to be, you're a chiropractor and you would need them to see you after the no, show. There we go. Be this yeah. way? Oh. Insta's vertical, girl. So, does this work or no? Yeah, you're, you're crooked. Uh, it doesn't go. It doesn't go up and it, down? It, 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 I have to change the phone. Hold on one second. Hold on. I thought I was trying to do it horizontal. There you go. So. Now she's holding, Horace is holding it. Oh, your executive producer. Yes. That's right. Let's see if this works. I found this in my dresser. Oh, good. I don't, I think it's going to be too small. Mm -hmm. Oh, no. Oh, no. <sighs> it's real life here. Real life. Mm -hmm. uh, Clarissa, how you been, love, back there? Oh, I'm just peachy. Um, living the dream. Your daughter's playing for Inter Miami now with Messi, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, she's showing him how it works. She's my spirit <laughs> animal. Could you please relay that to her today? I will. I, I tell her she's got to get out there and play with you guys. She's so busy. Well, what? so she's playing like... So she's, right now she's um, JV it uh, volleyball it doesn't. for the school. It doesn't okay. Fit. Okay, I'll hold it. It's gonna be about now. I'll hold it. It doesn't fit. Let's see, maybe a little this. high. Oh, it does. It's just not even. It's pretty setting. It was right. No, it has to be. The phone has to be vertical. It is vertical. I know, but it doesn't like. I guess that's all right. You think what you see is my chin up. <laughs> You know what I'm talking about? Worst case, you could just hold it. It's okay, too. But... Well, I'm getting rid of this dining room table. I don't know. I guess I'm standing. <laughs> well, you look beautiful. Um, I'm super excited to talk with you. And you're the first show I've had for quite some time, so I'm excited that you even want to do it. And I, um, I think it's going to do really well for you. We're going to introduce you to a bunch of new people that didn't know that you were around town. So I'm excited. Let me jump right into it as if I would talk to you if we were hanging out, which we will be doing soon. Um, how long have you been in the hood? Well, when did you move to the PC area? I moved to Florida in September of 2019. Okay. So that was like the thick of the COVID world. No, it was no? before. It was oh, just before? before. No, and... one, it was, no one even ever even... That word never came out of their mouth, now, COVID. What I always like to find out what was, I mean, Florida speaks for itself, but what was some of the uh, attraction? Did you have family, friends? Was it a love? Was it a, the weather? All things considered. This, hey. Fine. Oh, <laughs> you did this. Okay. Yeah. So, so, so Clarissa and I used to live together like over 20 years ago. Oh, shit. In Long okay. Island. Yeah. So, um, and then she said, Oh, I'm selling my condo and I'm moving down to Orman. And I said, well, where's right. Orman? Right. <laughs> he said, by Daytona. And I said, oh, they have roads down there. And this is when she had like this bumblebee yellow convertible Mustang. It's pretty okay. funny. Very guidette. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> and then I came down to Orman like maybe two, three times a year to visit. Watched her daughter, Olivia, grew up. Okay. Up. And um, you know, I was the aunt that bought her the Barbie Dream House. That yes. I 
more than she did. <laughs> now, where did your guys' beautiful story start? Was this like college, high school, mm -hmm. small town, we, all the... Even, so what happened was um, I broke up with my future ex-husband okay. and I needed a place to live. So we then we got married and then got divorced. But I knew that was going to happen anyway because he was my future ex-husband. I love that. I've never heard <laughs> that. I'm, I'm stealing that for jokes in the future. <laughs> Fair enough. So, um, so we had a mutual friend and, you know, I was in a sushi restaurant going, oh, I'm going to break up with my, my boyfriend and, but I need a place to live. So she was like, oh, my friend Clarissa is looking for a roommate. And I said, oh, well, that's an interesting name. I go, is she German? Because <laughs> you don't hear Clarissa too much, right. right? So, um, and then we met and it was like, my cat loved her. Her cat loved me. We moved, I moved in with her. We lived together for about a year now. Nice. Yeah. Moved to Florida. Now we're, we were in, we were in New York at the time. Yeah, we were in Long Island. Wow. Okay. And Jefferson, Medford area. I love it. So then you, did you stay and then she, that, and then did the, actually she moved to Florida nearly thereafter or she, okay. That's how the, I see. She moved to going. Florida about within the year after. Gotcha. And yeah. then I married my future, future ex-husband. Ex I love it. Now my ex -husband. And then, and he's like, and then um, I came down to Ormond maybe once or twice a year to visit during the duration before I right. moved down there. I'm sure. And I had, I opened up a moving company within that time. And I started with one little van that I used to call the Rape Shack. Come on now. Are you <laughs> for real? Because it looked like the, you remember like the movie Jeepers Creepers? Yeah, of course. Now, Clarissa, you can come in here. Come on in here. So you look pretty. So, um, and it was kind of creepy. And I started my moving company, Lone Star Moving, with my buddy Paul from Texas. Okay. And um, he's the one who came up to me and said, I want to open up a moving company and I want you to run it. And this was right before the Great Depression round two in 2008. Yep. And I was like, well, I'm entitled and I do quite well. I said, but they're dropping like flies because yeah. of what's going on. I said, I don't know anything about moving, so I'll, um, I'll figure it out. Right. So we opened up our moving company, and the day I was cashing my paycheck, my last paycheck with the title company, I was in Capital One Bank when we actually walked into banks then, yeah. you know? And I was bouncing back and forth, because I've always liked that, because I'm crazy, right? And, um, and this guy turns around and he goes, oh, I love your glasses. And I said, let me tell you something, don't ever go to Lens Crafters, because they're a ripoff. And he said, oh, that's good to know, because I own a chain of eyeglass stores. Oh, I'm, go figure. And I go, what's the name of it? And he says, Cheaper Peepers. Remember when I worked at Cheaper Peepers? Yeah. <laughs> and then the next thing you know, I got a job offer. So I started working there part time, which supplemented some in income for me. And actually, I used that money to invest into the moving company. Nice. He let me run the moving company out of the eyeglass store. So... And there I was. And then within a year of having my moving company, I had three 26 foot trucks, wow. about 10 employees. And then by the time, whew, I was sick, I was in business for almost 10 years, more than 10 years, I had six 26 foot trucks and about 16 employees. That's amazing. Thank you. And you were running it, you're running it basically, you were based out of New York, but you were, I'm, I'm sure, completely you were tri-state area wow yeah and how and so that industry in general is just a, a shit ton of logistics right i mean you got the it's a lot of problem solving etc you know, the, the industry itself is um it's interesting because moving you're 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 going into people's homes right and they don't know you from a hole in the wall mm -hmm. and you're touching their most precious items mm -hmm. and you know, it's a, it's a, it's stressful for the homeowner and it's stressful for the movers yep. because they're, they, they're not, it's not the most well-respected trade right. either. So, um, it's interesting. Why do you say, I'm, I find it fascinating. What it give me, you know, this better than most you've been doing it for so long. Why, what do you mean? It's not the most respected from the, from the actual people that are working it or the overall, like the, the job, like, what do you mean? So here's something, here's something. I always say it always starts from the top. Okay. So, um, how a business is run, how the mentality of the business, because it's human beings. We're not artificial intelligence right. We're human beings. 
And if you don't treat your people with respect, it's there's there will be a trickle down effect as far as employees not respecting the company, therefore they don't respect the clients. Because so um if a owner, manager, operator doesn't treat their employees like human right. beings, right. they're not going to treat their that person's business like it's theirs. Right. I, I can speak for myself. I treat my employees. I mean, I made them homemade sauce. Remember that, Clarissa? Yep. I made five trays of baked ziti with extra ragazza. I put sausage in it with yeah. one, you know, and I, I fed my foreman. I would give them trays of, of food to bring home for their families. Right. I would, I would give them $50 bonuses just for being fabulous. Now, don't get me wrong. It always, it wasn't always skipping through the tulips. Right. I'll tell you that um, much. Sure. There's also, you know, most people don't aspire to be movers. Yeah. It's one of the most, like roofers, movers, one of the most right. simple, laborious right. jobs. Right. You know? So and, that with this, with this background though, and your tenacious like demeanor in general, when you move, did you come to Florida with this, this yeah. con? Con no, you were like, I'm com what was your initial idea plan as far as what you were going to do? I mean, it, outside of having a few cocktails with Twitter and I. <laughs> so, well, uh, that's always going to be the game with me. <laughs> so, <laughs> don't threaten me with a good time. So anyway, <laughs> um, so what happened was my mother and stepfather passed away wow. together. Oh, in a, condolences. Uh, the day before Thanksgiving in 2017. Wow. Yeah, well, my mom passed away in her sleep and she Clarissa gets upset oh, I'm sure this. you by the way I hope you know that this the show goes where it goes you, but you don't you talk about what very okay. it's very important to me okay go this for is it a reason why, this is reason why I'm doing this okay so, to make them proud because so anyway I was very close to my mother and very close to my stepfather my stepfather was like my living soulmate my life Beautiful. soulmate and my mother, who was a personal trainer, nutritionist, gorgeous. She looked like Sophia Loren. Wow. Like, like I hope I grow like she did with beauty in her age. Because she looked like she was 50 at 70, wow. right, Clarissa? Beautiful. Yeah. Beautiful. Thank you. So here's a picture of my mom. I'll have to get over that. You want to send that? This is in the 70s. Let me see. She Let me see. Up like a, a Mad Hat or Playboy bunny. Go put it up. Yeah. Wow. Okay. That was yes. in the 70s. Yes, I didn't know. So, but, um, so when they passed away together, I already started having, I was getting burnt out with my moving company. I really was. It was like, I was working probably 95 hours a week. I would come down to Clarissa's and I'd have to work and I'd have, there was always drama wow. because I wasn't there. It was almost like, you know, you get too big too fast and it's really hard to, it's really hard to um, maintain, especially when you can't find trusted individuals to help you. Right. And especially being a woman in that industry, and I'm, I'm tough, believe me, no one's getting anything by me, but I cannot be 40 places at right. once as well. So it was just all coming down. So I, as easy as it was to start my moving company, I knew it was time because it was as easy to close it. And I, I parted it out okay. like an old car. And I found my good, right, I found my good guys' jobs. I sold a book of business to men on the moon. That's a smart. very big, yeah, big yeah, yeah, yeah. company in Long Island. Um, I, I mean, I had some, I had assisted living accounts. Yeah. I was a, a industry partner certified, because you have to take a test, with the National Association of Senior Move Managers. So my accounts were worthy. Right, right. You know, they weren't just, you know, apartment complex, which, hey, hey well, that's right. great. Right. So um, I decided I was working as a marketing manager um, for an engineering firm. And I guess the shock after my parents' death, you know, it knocked me off my access. I and, oh, you know, I don't know, you know, we all at the, you know, we all know that death is part of the right. game of life. However, when it does come, it does change your life and it changes who you are in, as a person. So, mm -hmm. you know, when your roots feel like they've been ripped from under your feet, then, you know, it's- If you don't it's, mind, you, mind me asking, how, 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 old, how old was she, if you don't mind me asking? My mom was 71. Oh, that's and my so young. My stepmother was 75, 76. 
in so, my opinion, in an Italian world, that's young, you know, so right, I empathize. Correct, yeah. correct, correct. So us Italians, we're vivacious and we just don't, we've got the best skin ever. It's amazing. Amen. So, um, <laughs> so what happened was my mom, like personal trainer, nutritionist, beautiful soul, beautiful woman, she had um, cardiomyopathy, heart disease, and it's a silent killer. And I did not know this because they kept a lot from us, but she only well, had years. Yeah, I'm so, so I, 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 in congruency to what you're saying, I'm learning that as I'm adulting that, that we don't share a lot in an Italian family. So I'm, correct. yes, I can only imagine, yes. And the I they do that too. Yep. So it's just all, most families, they just don't want to burden their children as right. they get older. And yep. maybe it's a ego thing as well. You know, I don't know. We shall find out when the years to come, yep. right? So, um, so when my mom passed away in her sleep, my stepfather committed suicide 20 minutes later and they were found oh, holding right. hands in bed together. So I decided to move to Florida. But while I decided, I called Clarissa up on May 31st at 8 a.m. And I said, I'm moving to Florida. She goes, no, you're not. You've been saying this for years. Right, right. I, said, well, I don't really have anything to hold me back now. And she goes, all right, let's see what happens. Because, you know, I get all excited and right. I say things. Right. And then next thing you know, September 13th, I strolled my butt right on in here with two cats and everything I owned. I and um, I started a little company called Booth Babes. Okay. And that was a trade show representation oh. company. Oh, nice. But yeah. then COVID hit. And I was so that put a, a kibosh on it. Right. So then I went back into moving because I needed to work. Right. Right. Um, so I became a in-home sales consultant for all my sons moving with an 88% closing ratio. Girl. Meaning girl. I went to your home. I assess what you have and I give an estimate on spot. So, and it, it was fun. I did well. And then they started messing with me. And, you know, Florida's not one of the best states to, to, to be employed in unless you work for yourself. Yeah. And it's still interesting. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's not a very, work for some reason is not well respected. In yeah. So anyway, so I was there for about six months and then COVID really hit yeah. and we were in lockdown. So during that month of lockdown, I retaught myself clarinet and I typed up email templates and just researched a bunch of moving companies where I could become like a sales manager. Right. Nice. And then I worked for Cento Moving. Nice. And sales manager and I did very well. I actually reconstructed his entire company. I fired Amazing. every Everybody, my first day I was there, I, it was, I felt like, I felt like, you know, like just, it was, I was like, nope, 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 nope. I called up a bunch of the foremen from all my sons moving. Mm -hmm. And I was like, hey guys, I was like, I'm running Sancho moving. When can you start? Five of them came over. Nice. And it was really based on just the way I did my estimates. Right. Hence back to taking care of your people that, right. you know, because the movers are the most important aspect of moving. Absolutely. Yeah. If they know what's, if they have all the details, it takes five minutes to write notes up. Yep. So if they have all the details of a move, you have no idea how that homeowner or the person who's moving or the business who's moving right. feels appreciated because time was taken because this is, these are their treasures, whether yeah. it was just or, or whether it was a hand-me-down from their, from their family, you know? So I did that. And then the owner, did his thing and he's, he saw that I didn't have the stress that he'd had, but he was the owner. I was the sales manager and he took my job and he hired someone to take his job and he has every right because he is the owner. So, and that, I guess that was my natural timing of when I was supposed to be there. So I went back into the title insurance here okay. in Florida, not realizing that it is definitely not like New York. Yeah. Insurance. And I did that for a few years. And I guess being from, you know, my accent, people were offended by it over the phone. I think we talked about that. And I was like, well, I don't know what to do here. It's I'm damned if I do, right. I'm damned right. if I don't. I'm definitely not gonna be that Southern Belle. Huh? You know, I just don't have that, you know? Right. I mean, born in Brooklyn, raised in Long Island, we're, we're ferocious, Right. so um, in a good way. So, um, 
I don't know, I think it was like a year ago, I was in Ronan, drinking my sake with some friends, and I said, you know, oh, I got in trouble today at work because I, I was told I was being rude. And I asked, well, why was I, why did somebody complain about me being rude? Drink some water for us. Yeah. They're in the fridge. So, uh, <laughs> so um, what's it called? Um, I said, I don't want to open up another moving company, but I'm gathering I really should um, do something for myself right. where my voice will not be, it does not define me, right. but the way I am in person where people could put the voice and face to a human being. Right. So anyway, I said, oh, maybe I'll just open up a packing, moving coordinating company so I don't have all, you know, I don't have to go through all of that again, right. having a moving company. There's a lot of components in owning a moving right. company. Not just a box truck and two guys. It's a lot. Yeah. You know, there's a lot of ethics that you really need to follow in owning a moving company. So um, I said, ooh, pretty packers. There you go. And some of my girlfriends were like, oh, my God, that's great. And then, you know, a year went by and nothing right. really. And I didn't really. The seed was I might have talked planted. About. I planted this seed within myself. So she's doing sit-ups right now. It's pretty fun. So, um, and then August 4th, I was fired uh, from oh. a title company because of my voice. Wow. And I said, okay. That's so it. I partied that weekend, hung out, did my uh, thing with uh, my friends, you know, just said, all right, let me decompress and put everything into perspective. Yeah. And 7.30 a.m. Monday, August 7th, I went on Sunbiz. And I said, Pretty Packers LLC. And the name wasn't taken. And I said, holy shit. I said, oh, that's a message. Yeah. You know? So I said, bing, file. And then the next thing you know, I'm, I'm putting together a business, a company. And it's with a mission, with a positive right. mission. It's really to save our community from scam movers who right. are uninsured, un inexperienced, yeah. and just take the money and run kind of thing. And the reason why I came up with Pretty Packers was because when I was in title insurance down here, I was a processor. The processor is the first person to engage with a buyer and a seller okay. from the title company. We're the, we're the first person to, to initiate contact, to introduce ourselves. It's like, mm -hmm. hi, I'm Renee. I'm with such and such title company, and I'm your processor, and I'm here to make sure that you know the entire process is smooth up until closing. First, first move closing. And the next thing you know, you know, you form relationships with people over the phone right away, the ones that right. don't complain about your New York accent, you know. So, and uh, I got a lot of questions like, oh, do you know a mover? Um, it's hard for me. And it was, I found it interesting that they didn't even know that I owned a moving company, but they, but they were asking me. And then the next thing you know, I'm getting into detail. Well, did you get a quote? No, they don't want to send me a quote. I go, well, then you're never going to use that company right off the bat. And then, oh, email me your quote and I'll look at it and tell you how to negotiate or what to look for. Right. And then, oh, well, you're not doing a flat rate for a three bedroom home there. That's mathematically incorrect. You know, right. you, can, we, you can never tell. So I said, maybe you could suggest to them an hourly with a not to exceed. Right. So you kind of know your cap, yep. you know, because moving isn't just picking things up and putting them in a truck. Right. You have to assemble it. If there's parts, you have to put parts in a bag. You have to label it. You have right. to take it to the back piece of a piece of furniture after it's disassembled. Then you have to shrink wrap it. Right. Then there's loading it from the, whatever room it is onto the ramp, onto the truck. Then you're playing the game of Tetris, of putting it right. perfectly in the <sighs> truck. They call it um, pack it right, pack, pack it tight, pack it right. Nice. You know? And that's the game of Tetris in a moving truck because you don't want things rocking and rolling and rattling in the back of the truck while it's being transported to the right. drop off location. So there's a lot of components. Then you got to unload it. Then you got to take the shake wrap off. Then yeah. you have to reason it, put it in the right room. Then you have to reassemble it. It's, it's not, it's a, there's a whole scientific mathematical equation to did, it, which did I you, learned. Did, did you notice like with moving where was, it was where most of the people moving because they wanted to or because they had to interesting question um 
we got a lot of going through a divorce. Oh. Yeah, which, whew, I remember whew, in New York more, you know, because we're passionate people and we wear our hearts on our right. sleeves. So look, that, that husband, I'm leaving his end. They would tell me things and I'm like, oh my, you know, um, they're all circumstances, businesses moving. COVID was interesting. Having, running a moving company during COVID was really interesting. I don't know how my guys worked with masks on. I can't imagine. In the, in the yeah. summer heat down here, yeah. I don't know how they did it. Uh, but they did it. And that's, you know, that's when you did take you care of your people. Did you notice too? I mean, I'm, I'm super thankful. I've only had a move like once, <laughs> I think, really. Oh. And um, I, <laughs> I don't even even know I, that one time now I also have I have like a as I'm adulting I don't I only say no to things because I if I'm willing to if I'm willing to accept the fact that someone says no to me for instance picking someone up at the airport helping someone move right. etc um, those are the two big ones uh, with that being said when someone did you were you did you have a lot of people that that were I mean, once again, it's not a lot. I don't think there's a lot of joy in moving. So it's a pretty, it's- I it's, had a lovely moving No, not you, not, oh, you did. But I'm just saying the average person you hear moving and you think, oh God, right? Well, it's So stressful. now it's that's stressful. why I, I actually, I have a person I'm gonna be referring you to soon what? What? that I think, correct me if I'm wrong, and this is what I've, this is so far what my hypothesis on what you do, which I'm sure you do all of, you can do all of the things. Not, but I'm, are you also, would you be able to, I'm sure you, once again, this is a rhetorical question, but here's what I was thinking, what they need and see how you would approach it was going to a house, identifying what should go where and how to pack it. And then also now, are you performing or do you have people that perform the actual physical labor now with this new, newly invented? Yes. Yeah, so I have partnered up with um moving companies who are like-minded such as myself i see who, so you're kind, kind of like the gc of the moving I'm situation the manage, i'm the manager of it okay so yes so i'm taking the stress out of having to coordinate everything right for my clients so they trust me to match them i'm like a moving matchmaker if you i think love of it, it. Ooh, maybe I should do something like hey, that. Write that down, they Clarissa. They call me the moving ma madam. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> so, I mean, I call myself that. That's fine. I'll call me they. How's that? <laughs> now, so. because I feel like, too, because you're still in such the, you're, I feel like you're taking all these different parts that you've acquired and, and skill sets in this genre and putting them in this, like, concierge approach Correct. to the act, like a person. Correct. What do you, what do you see, do you, are you getting a lot of customers that are moving internally within the area? Are they leaving? Are there, There's, are you getting customers that are coming to the area or all of it? Most, so my work originates in Florida. Okay. So, because I, unless somebody from Long Island says, oh, Refers Renee, can you help me out? And then I'll fly up there if I have to, and I'll spend a week with family and friends. Right. But it really, so I, it has to originate in Florida because I have to go there to, to meet. Assess it. Correct. And because then I also have to see who they are, how they are. Right. So I can match them with the right mover that I have. So I, before I really started accepting clients, I did all my networking and contacted all the people that I know. Right. Met with them, came up with an with an agreement of over everything and procedural agreement. You know what I mean? So everyone's on the same page because I'm I'm pretty big in um proper communication. Amen. You know? Yep. So yeah, yeah, it's important. Um oh sorry. So now do you see a lot of do you see a, a big trend of people moving like what's going on in the so moving world? People fine. This is what's going on. A lot of people are leaving the state. Florida. They're, yeah. Where are they a going? lot of people well, so for instance, I'm I'm pretty popular with the senior citizen community and I'll tell you why. Okay. Because their children who are probably in their late thirties, yep. you know, early forties, a lot of them live up north and they can't be here. Right. So they trust me to make sure their parents are in good hands. Oh. So presently I have a client, she's actually moving she, her herself physically is moving to Michigan to be with her daughter. Okay. Her daughter flew down. 
uh, Monday. I was with them all day yesterday. I had, they're leaving a day early. So I was at a meeting, you know, a networking breakfast meeting with some ladies, right. which worked out perfectly. And then I got a phone call from the realtor and I had to pack the garage up in my lovely dress from my meeting yesterday. I was like, I shazammed it right there. Yeah. I was like, all right, let's get this done, you know? And the movers are coming Monday, uh, Monday morning, which I will be there to open the door right. for them. I'll have coffee and donuts and bagels for, for all the movers. Because when you start that off right from the start, the day just, it just continues that right. way. Right. So, you know, I, I spent a lot of time with my client. Her name is Molly. She's lovely. She's almost 70, but she's in her early stages of dementia. Uh, so the family trusts me. To take care of it take care of her with compassion absolutely so it's a really nice story i grew i was really attached to her actually i gave her a big hug i started crying yesterday i was like oh i wish you weren't moving yeah. you know <laughs> you know and you know because i'm in her home while she's there absolutely. packing up her belongings and she's playing music we're dancing yeah. she's trying to feed me while i work of and course I, was like, oh, I charge by the hour you know what I'm paying <laughs> you know pay me to so, eat <laughs> she's a good cook too so, and then, um, you know, I went back there yesterday, right before they, they got on the road to drive to Michigan and I got her this wall size coloring book. Like, remember wow. when I that? And I said, you know, music and art, it really helps with Absolutely. dementia. Not that it, not that it solves the dementia problem, right. but it keeps their brain instead of falling in that, that net, it's like right. a net. You know yep. what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And it keeps them stimulated. So I drove back there just for that. Right. So she could get into her new place. They could hang it on the wall and she could just color. That's beautiful. Yeah. I thanks. love that you're, um, I joke about it now, but growing up, being, uh, growing up in the late eighties, early nineties as a young boy, it was, it was every movie, everything was greed is good and act as if, and you know, fuck it, so to speak, and right. get yours and not theirs. And I remember growing up with that mindset for a minute that like, because I knew I wanted to be an entrepreneur since I was very young. And I had that in my, my, my DNA of business for a while. And then before you know it, I, I think that, you know, growing up and hearing business isn't personal, I completely disagree with that statement. And um, I, it's refreshing to see you exercising um your business as a reflection of your personality and i Correct. think Correct. Um, business is very personal i yeah. think whether you're selling a product or rendering a service people want people want to deal with people you know and that that's a dying that's a dying trait Correct. amongst most things um but what's in interesting itself. is i was super blessed um i've got this wonderful i love all my customers because mm -hmm. i consider them family but i um I mean, you got a good, you got a, you got a critic, you got a pretty cool concept. I try to meet, I try to meet my customers at their vibe, so to speak. I know that's such a trendy thing to say, so sorry, but like even meeting you, it was like instantaneously, like I didn't need to bullshit you. I didn't need it. And, and I don't have any bullshit, but like there was no, there's no, there was no fluff. There was no, like, I didn't have to, I didn't have to bow. And I can bow. If I need to bow, I will bow. If someone wants that fluff, if somebody wants the, but with you, it was awesome. And I got to meet you. I level with, this is what I'm going to do. Yep. This is how it's going to get done. And it was, a, it's been a dream. It's going to continue to be a dream working with you. Cause it's like, you just trusted me, just get it done. Yeah. And, yeah, well, and I'm sure you. When it's association as well. So, right. you know, Clarissa mentioned you. And I was like, oh, wait a second, I know him. I said, he's like charming, handsome. You know what's interesting? I, I, I feel like we haven't met in person yet, right? We no. haven't been to like, okay. Cause I, when we were on the phone, just because I think we, I, I love Clar we did in Flagler Maybe, Beach. We did, I don't know. We, did uh, we, look who's here. Didn't we run into you at the restaurant but outside? That, and that was with, you had another girlfriend with you that I don't think it was Renee. Yeah. Yeah. Well, was she loud and wore red glasses? No. Oh, there I would. Like, she was. She was another one of your besties, <laughs> a, a beautiful blonde oh, girl. Like I don't. You have another one with that? Oh, she was cheating we'll on you, Renee. Uh huh. And she uh -huh. was like, "This is my only friend I got." No, I'm just Move kidding. Down to but this one. What What's interesting? 
interesting is I was super, I had acquired a customer and I had not got to meet her yet. And she's a wonderful woman. And um, I'm not allowed to say her age, but she's, she's, she's seasoned with beauty and, and wisdom. And she's got this wonderful husband and I've been working with them for quite some time. Well, long story short, um, I was able to meet them not too long ago. And the average person I would imagine, when I sometimes tell people that I was somewhere for four hours and they're like, what did you do? I'm like, I don't know. But the con long story short, we met at like 11 o'clock and I think we got done at like four, three wow. o'clock, four o'clock, you know, and there you for it's like you didn't even know what time it was. It was a beautiful setting. So it's refreshing to hear you giving these people, especially when they're let's just say in their seasoned time of life where I, I actually had a, I was in a uh, nurser, nursing home recently. Mm -hmm. And I used to actually do a lot of work in the nursing community, the nursing home community, because I wasn't um, just like with you, if you had, I was doing a lot of back in the day, 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 I started a courier service in Palm Coast when there was no apps and things of that nature. And I, I was doing that. And I didn't realize it, but one of my biggest accounts ended up becoming a nursing home and I was getting their pharmacy stuff and bringing it back forth. And I've always had a very a, a, a great attraction towards the elderly growing up with, I was super blessed with having my mom's parents, my dad's parents for the majority of my life. And I'm still blessed with having my mom's parents from Italy. And I love, it's, it's, it's good to ask them questions and it's good, to ha it's good to be told you're an idiot from an older person that you, you, know, they, you know how to do it better. It's and I, I started to spend time at these nursing homes when I would drop these pharmacy stuff off. I would sit and I'm sure you've been around them and you see them. It's, it can be a rather depressing place. And I was in one for the first time in quite some time. And first it gut checked me to always slow down and to really suck the life out of the day and to realize that, you know, the, I pray relentlessly to quick, you know, quick with the mind, slow with the tongue and stay young and vibrant and, and to try to enjoy it. But those moments and being around those, t the people that are, they almost look at you as if like, don't waste this day, you know? And I'm, I, you are a breath of fresh air to hear you spending that kind of time and the personability with a customer that's on the early set of dementia. And then for someone to trust you with your stuff, that's one thing, but to someone to trust you with their mama, yeah. that's, yeah, I mean, that's they, amazing. I have a key to their home. Is that beautiful? It's a beautiful, beautiful thing, and it makes me feel like okay, I have purpose yeah. again. But yeah. my parents tragically together, you know, um, I just feel like oh, I'm a, a human being Amen. with purpose. What if you don't mind me asking? And this is just once again, I don't have a, a script, and I just I'm I'm just loving on you. What what kind of season are you in in life in general? Like all things, not just business, I but all, like all. In the season of of appreciation, living life, I don't question what is what is this all about all anymore. Right. It's amazing the anxiety that I had losing everything I know. I mean, I had to claim bankruptcy I'm, a month after my parents wow. died. I mean, wow. I've been through, I have been through some, some shit. And we all Amen. have, and you know, it's amazing. It's easier when, when, when three years later, you say, "Oh my God, this is where I am." But then I said, "This is the path I was supposed to be on." Right. I no longer, I no longer question why. Now I question, what am I going to do with? Ooh. I don't even question it. The question is really an exclamation Amen. point. If you think, yeah. Let me let me piggyback on that, and a. I say this as a peer of yours, not superior. I'm proud of you. By it's, the way, I'm sorry to interrupt. If I keep looking down, it's because I'm making, this is how I do oh, my business. Oh, I love so it. I put, in, I put in an eyeglass cloth. Yep. And I don't want to, I don't want to back, I don't know, ruin your train of thought. But I, I can't even do keepers, it. Keepers, keepers, what it was it called again no, you worked keep, at? Keeper keep, peepers. Ridiculous. Keeper peepers. Right. Those are good companies. I love they, they do really it. And then I put in, you know, a little yeah. Facebook, yeah. social Smart. media, scan code. And then a coup, a fifty dollar off coupon. That a girl. This card. So this is how I hand out my business That's cards. That's smart. So, well done. Good marketing pieces. I was in the bar last night. You should see all the stickers. What? <laughs> <laughs> you got one on your head. 
Um, but no, I was, I was going to say in, in regarding your statement, as far as just having overall, like an attitude of gratitude, yeah. it's, it's, yes. it's unique. The, the local chief of police in Flagler beach, um, he taught me, you're only as good as your last 24. And one of the things I've learned is I'm a still, I, I, I'm a big firm believer in the guy upstairs. And I, there's that saying that like, everything happens for a reason. My twist on that is what you do with the, the, what you do is the reason is, is like, I don't like, you know, that obviously you, you come from a background of having you, you've been through some shit and some shit that a lot of the people haven't been through. And that's, that's, that's by no means can be something to, to, to easily digest, but I would never want to say that happened for a reason, but what you did was the re how you handle it right. yeah. is this going to make you stronger, faster, wiser. And I think once again, just from the outside in and getting to fall in love with you, I think you got, well, first of all, I'm biased as hell. So I love us. I love us Italians. So like we're doing it, you know, I'm, but I'm Russian Jew too. They call that. A are Jew. you really? A Jew oh man. man. I should You're just that joke. <laughs> one big bomb. She's about, amazing. I want to get in. I was like, I like it better when she's here. Yeah. <laughs> Even though well, I, I, was, I was all freaking out this morning. <gasps> I, did, did I do good calming you down? Yes. I just try to. Yes. Okay. Yes. I have to well, I try to, you, once again, whether it's a, whether, it doesn't matter what it is. It's, I've learned, and it, this has been a, it's a growing process. I'm still in it, but I've learned that I, I was on the phone with somebody the other day and they were kind of like, inadvertently asking me for some advice and I don't try to speak anymore unless spoken to when it comes to strangers asking me for thing or kind of, I just keep, I stay in my lane. But my point is this individual was kind of harping on me a little bit with just like, help me. So I threw out him as young man going through this transition professionally and geographically. And he's like, give me some input. And I said, you want to know what I think? I said, I still don't know what I'm doing. I don't think anyone really knows what they're doing because it's our first time doing it. But I would say being able to keep your peace when you don't, when it's, when it's being threatened, taken, abused, yelled at, or, or tested and giving it to someone who may or may not deserve it is probably one of the most unique things I'm learning. And one of the, and I know I'm, I'm sure you're picking up what I'm throwing down, but to simplify it is when you're in the matrix, and I use that analogy, which is rather cliche, but you get what I'm saying. When the minute you walk out your door on a daily basis, and whether it's something rudimentary that you're doing or something unorthodox, you're on a trip that you're going somewhere and you're taking a flight you've never been on or an airport you've never been to. So you're fight or flight and you're already a little bit stressed out and you're wondering if I'm going to be there on time and this, that, and the other, and all these logistics and everything starts going wrong. Then it's not necessarily because god's mad at you or this that but you know the flight gets canceled and the uber driver sucks and it smells like shit in there and and the guy cuts you off and the place you always go to breakfast happens to be closed though it said it's open i've noticed that, that and i see why I, I have hope in humanity but i see why the world can be getting can get ugly real quick and that is tr treating people well when you're not well correct it's, is pro is is the process every day that's every probably day. the only, biggest we're yeah. only human sometimes yep. sometimes we're not at our best yep and, but you know but then you know you come back to center <laughs> and you say i'm really sorry yeah. i'm really sorry you know and i'm working on it and you know people who people who can relate yeah. they said no problem no Absolutely. problem you know Absolutely. Um, however, it was also, you know, it, it also depends on the level as well, you yeah. know, but, but you know, that all comes with time and age and, mm -hmm. and, and, you know, the, it used to be what we did to keep us stimulated. Now it's who's in our life. Yeah. And it, if it's just sitting outside, having a cup of coffee together, and that's how you spend your time together, but that's what it is in life, yeah. which is important. You well, know, it's, in, it's that's why it was refreshing to be in that nursing home and walking around and that the where i had to go i had to walk like three blocks so to speak to get to this particular room and every you know you know those you know it's a it's a long hallway with three or four rooms right. in each hallway and i go right left right left and i'm looking 
and every single room except for maybe one out of three different blocks, four rooms to a block, eight rooms to a block, I probably saw one room with some people in it, visiting yep. the people. Yep. And you realize, and you hear all these cliche statements, and I don't want to sound like a cynical, cynical, neurotic piece of shit, but like, you came in alone, you're leaving alone, right? And I realized too, this thing called age is, we all get, it's unique, right? Like you, you, you need your pillow, you need your toothbrush, you like your bed, you know, you, you like your things, you like Correct. your toilet, and Correct. it can be funny because especially once again, I'm biased, so I'll speak on the behalf of us Italians. We, we, we need, I need that oil. I yeah. need that pepper. I don't, and when you don't have what you want and you're tested, right? It's fascinating. And I got to tell you once again, I, and I mean this sincerely, I, one of the reasons I started the show or this, this open dialogue was learning from people. And I'm, it's, you're in a, and I'm not saying this to sound to patronize you or to sound like because I say it to a lot of people that I'm influenced by which is most of the people I sit down with and talk because there's an attraction you're an amazing human I mean that's some crazy shit to have gone through and if you, do you have siblings that are I, in the picture or I have a brother he lives in Myrtle oh, Beach okay um and I have, have two stepsisters um okay. one one sister which uh she lives in Arlington she just retired um, as a commander in the Coast Guard. She's, she's lived in like over a hundred countries. She's amazing. She's the kind of person you want to have a conversation with at a campfire. Yeah. Fair enough. Uh, yes. My sister is stepsister, but she's my sister, you know, um, she's a New York City detective. Go figure. Okay. I don't know. It doesn't work down here. I still get in trouble. So it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> she can't get me. Oh, now, crazy. what's it? Oh, it once dogs. again, all these questions, if they're I'm, I, if they're too intrusive, my apologies. But I'm yeah. gonna, I'm I'm curious by nature. So, like, are you? Is it a, is it a stereotypical Italian an aging Italian family where Billy's mad at Uncle Tony and no. Uncle Tony? No. no, my family's not like that. We're we're pretty. Nice. Chill. Yeah. So my my we were very raised on you know you just do the right thing and you just treat people with respect and you know who whatever. are you kind of and I know I know. Uh, everything's in season. So like, who's, who are you closest with? Or who do you, who is like, who could you call? Closest with my stepfather's family for some reason. Okay. Yeah. They're Irish. Maybe because I like to drink, who knows? You know, <laughs> so Clarissa's like, shit, she can't believe it. She's, ar she's already in the background having one. Well, I was also married to the military for a long time too. So I learned how to do all my drinking there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, um, so mostly my cousin Courtney, who Clarissa's is friends nice. with, actually. Nice. Uh, yeah. So um, she's like a sister to me, but I'm closest with her. But okay. my family lives in New York. Right. So Clarissa. So I moved to when I moved to Ormond. Clarissa was That's like my only family. That's it. Right. Yeah. She introduced me to her circle, who have become my circle, mm -hmm. and now we're just a big old circle. She's yeah. got a tight. She's got a good crew. She does, and she she does. Well, she, when you're good, you're good. And she you know? saved me for she saved me for last, so that's why I, the best for last. <laughs> the best was. for last, yes. So I keep dropping everything. So um, my the concept of pretty packers really is with purpose. So that's right. why my hashtag all the time: work in purpose on purpose. I like wow, I like it. Work in yeah. purpose on purpose. Right. right. Good for you. It's something Dude. like. Like, I, I just feel like a, a better human being. And my, so from backtracking is the conversations that I had as a title processor with my buyers and sellers. I was, it was amazing to hear how I protected them from being scammed. Yeah, yeah. Just by a simple conversation, but just by yeah. saying, forward me the email that the moving company sent you. Let me, let me look at the quote. Let me do some research on them, you know, and then it was funny because I even had clients that when I was no longer at Cento Moving, they called me and they said, hey, can you help me out? You know, we're having some issues with our stuff in storage. And I was like, well, I don't work for the company anymore, but I'll help you out as a person. Right. Nice. You know, so I'm not going to get involved with communicating with the company, but I'll, I could be your little bird, you know, telling you what to say. Chirp, 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 chirp. Right. So, so what's on the horizon as far as like you, 
I see you're very active because I've, I've actually, it's funny. Well, I, make I, videos, I've, so now I'm making videos. <laughs> yeah, which you're doing great. Um, what's, are you, you, you belong to some groups, these, the, the marketing groups or. What do you mean? Like I don't know. Don't you like, so like, I saw you post, there was like an acronym BBB was yeah, like so, girls. So that's like babes, booze and business. Oh, um, I like it. You know, thank you. you you know, I've taken a lot of money out of my savings to invest in myself. Good and you. you know, I've only been open for a month. I've only been right. and then I've only been really fully functioning for like two weeks. Cause it's taking a while, you know, I'm ordering my eyeglass. Oh ball, yeah. Jacuzzi, it's a lot. My stuff, you know, my business cards are velvet, you know, so it's like it takes a while to get things in. Right. You know? Um, sticker, I mean all sorts of stuff. So now that everything's coming in, I have a bunch of events that I'll be doing. I'm going to join the Chamber of Commerce in Ormond, um, Flagler, Port Orange, nice. Edgewater, New Smyrna, you know, um, Orlando, Stanford. Right. Right. Yeah, <laughs> so you got a lot of, it's Uber. interesting because I, I remember, um, I mean, I, I've been, I still, once again, I say that I have no advice to give, even though I've been doing, I've been business now since for 20 some odd years, which is crazy to think. Right. Um, but every day, you know, the drill, I mean, you, you're hungry, so it's going to work. I think, I think one of your biggest breakthroughs too, will probably be those, those type of accounts that you already know, like whether it's, whether it's like a, an apartment complex or something commercial, like a, yeah. like a commercial place where you, cause you could do all things. It doesn't have to be I'm residential. It could be certified again, yeah. but like I, awesome. I'm a moving company in New York. Yeah. Um, I'm going to get certified as an industry industry partner, um, with the national association of senior move managers, because awesome. I really do. I think that our senior citizens really are the backbone of our society. Yeah. If it wasn't for them, for their hard work, we wouldn't even be here where we are today yeah. and taken care of. And, mm -hmm. If I'm going to be proactive and, you know, try, if it's five people that I save, it's five less people that got scammed, you know, yeah. and really what my mission is. You know, I got, I, once again, take, take this, cause I know you're tenacious and you don't, I have no advice to get cause I don't know your industry. But one of the things that's coming to my mind is I think that you, I think you have such a wonderful calling and a wonderful appeal to put it into your thinking prayer tank and come up with maybe like a, 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 a slogan or an off branch that caters to the senior citizens, even though the name of the business has its place. I try to tell people when it comes to digital marketing, and I'll help you with this, by the way, so I'll come with solutions for you. But come, you're very good with slogans and taglines and, and put it into your thinking prayer tank in the near distant future. Let's, let's come up with something that's almost as simplistic of like elderly moving help you know like just put that in your tank and we can go with a marketing blitz using that slogan obviously on the behalf of you know nike let's do it right or just do it like you can you can have slogans that become part of your marketing push for a seasonal situation or even a, a, a framing within the business and i think just getting to know you you have such a you're like me i mean we're we have an we have an appreciation and an attraction towards the those that have done it before that have a little bit more times around the moon you know so i would say think about that and i think there's a wonderful potential of almost more clientele than you would know what to do with because it's a very just like i said i know i keep harping on it but it's so fresh in my memory and because it's so sentimental to me because i used to be there so much but these nursing homes they're they're not all dead they're not all dying they're, they're able-bodied sound mind and there's a lot of action going on in there. I was actually surprised, not surprised, but I, it's like, it's, there's a lot there. So my point is, is like, put that into your, you know, your recipe, I think, and anything I can do to help you. Now, this goes without saying as well, and Clister already you know this, whether you were paying me or not, which I'm very ecstatic to be part of your, you, you know, your customer base. So it thank you. Right. But <laughs> don't, no, I, this is all genuine too. I mean, I really mean it. You got, you got a vibe, but anything I can do to help you grow naturally by consequence, I'm, I'm here to love on you. And what I, what I've learned is that I'm super blessed and I, and I bounce around and I travel and I, and I, I go to, I'm all over the place. And 
one of the scariest things sometimes can be when I go to a new area, my biggest thing is I feel like I'm the new kid on the block that's at the lunch table that's scared. And Clarissa could probably resonate mm -hmm. with this is I want to find a pitch ASAP. I got to find soccer. I got, and it's hard. It's very hard sometimes to find the, find the crew, so yeah. to speak. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, yeah. There, you can find a website, you can find it, you go online, but Clarissa yeah. knows this, it doesn't, and I, at my age, I don't get to be able to go play at the, the league, like I could find soccer online, then it's a league for 14 year olds, so I can't, right. so as an adult, to find soccer in a random state or a random country can be hard to find the pick, there's pitches everywhere, right. and there's signs, but when do you play? Right. And to be accepted in that culture, and Clarissa knows this as well, just like one of my rules when I'm facilitating a game or a league or a team, I, I, it's everyone knows and my rule is you say one thing negative about a person, whether in the midst of a game or post game or pregame, you're off because yep. we're all dealing with a level of confidence that it takes that fast to be removed. And I don't deal with he or she's not good or they're not this or their cleats aren't cool. And my point in saying all this long, long format buildup is that it's amazing to see that you're out here trying to, to build and gather. It's way bigger than a moving company. You're doing, you know, you've got a, you've got a passion, you've got a drive. And yes, you have a service that's going to help bring a peace and, and clarity to moving someone or something to a different location. But I think that there's something bigger going on. And I think that it has to do with you making people feel okay and welcomed and it's going to be interesting because i almost wish you could get I, it will probably happen naturally but i almost wish you could get customers coming into the state too you know and we'll see how we can maybe well, get that say that because i had a conversation with somebody yesterday they were like well i really like you i think the way you you're you, you're genuine and i was like thanks you know yeah I, at first i thought i was trying to hook up and i was like i'm not interested in <laughs> so i'm like focus i'm like focus you know right Oh no, he's like, I think that my goal is to franchise. That's really you. my goal is to franchise and have women owned pretty nice. packers across the country. And then that's how I would that's how I would do it. That's how it starts I, to branch. I, I, I see. I keep it intimate and personal, um, with the mission of 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 protecting people. I and love it. I I wanna keep the bad guys out of our community. And with my firecracker personality, mm -hmm. you know, Got my machete. I'll slice them up and get them. Out. <laughs> you keep that. You, the little machetes in the bags too. You go hand those out. You got the machete. It's on the way. To you know what I loved when I was going my over other, your marketing paraphernalia. My other. Oh yeah. <laughs> <bought me. laughs> when I was uh, uh, when I was going over your verbiage and your marketing pieces and all that, I haven't heard the word concierge in quite some time, and I remember. I, oh, there it is. You ain't playing around, girl. That's for that's like just sitting on the kitchen table. You you, you brought it, brought it, brought it, butter your bread with the machete. <laughs> yeah, can you imagine? That's that's my Sicilian. <laughs> oh, I was gonna ask too. Yeah, what in, what's what's your influence out in Italy? Is it it's a Sic Sicilian? Sicily and uh, Naples. Not a girl. So, so and I'm um I was super blessed with going home um oh, yeah. and walking the streets and I'll touching the home. I'll go to Italy with you. Have you have you been? No, I was a little girl. I was at like five years old, but I, I almost died, so I don't remember. I probably blocked it out. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Are you serious? What happened? I almost drowned. I don't know. Where were you? Like in the? I was like in a pool. Yeah. Oh my gosh. I remember, and I I, I almost drowned. I don't even know how. And I love swimming. Like I do laps. Like right. Twice Great. And I almost drowned. We were there for like two weeks visiting family. I don't really remember much, but I know I almost oh, yeah. drowned. It's... I don't remember. Well, at five, yeah, you can't. It's funny, you've been, but you get, yeah, get Um, Well, I was super, I was there and I was able to, I was I was FaceTiming my grandfather, well, Nono, and he was ecstatic that, okay, he didn't live in a single, built a single, uh, a freestanding home. It was like a, you know, apartment, right. but I was able to go to his house. A and villa. Out, yep, downtown Naples and all that stuff, but. Yeah, um, I my I have, most of my family are from Naples and Italy, so it's uh, we're we're like minded. But I I tell you, like it's a it's I I knew Clarissa like knew that we were gonna vibe. There was no she didn't even give me an intro, no nothing. She was just like, "This is my friend." 
be friends. I love her though. You know, I miss, I don't, how I fell in love with Clarissa is that she, I don't even know how we crossed past originally, but soccer was our love bond yeah. and she brought her daughter out to Florida? the pitch. Down here in Florida, you guys met? Yeah. yeah. I can't even tell you where we, how did we meet Clarissa? I honestly can't tell you either. It was, love at, it was love at first sight. And all I remember, actually, it may have been a few years ago, you just genuinely reached out to me as a soccer mom and said, I hear you're the dude for soccer. And I was like, yeah. And she brought her daughter out. And I'm always a little bit scared when a younger person comes out. And the, But I, I took her, I remember meeting her. I think, I think your husband, you and-, and um, Olivia. Liv. I, I know. Liv came out. And I remember, like, I gave her the rundown, like, you're going to be playing with me. I'm be by my side. And then, boom, the talent on her, she was fine. I'm not kidding you. Very rarely does, you know, I play with a bunch of guys that I've known for 15 plus years, and the group has grown, but overall, 30 to 40 guys that they're all opinionated and they all think that they're Messi's and Ronaldo's. My point is, is that very rarely do you hear these guys going, like, bring them back. Or, like, and unfortunately, the, the women genre in soccer is still not very appreciate it so to speak so some of the guys are like we don't want a girl out here now they didn't say that about Liv because her feet talk and yeah. she was a oh, wow. wow I don't know how she I haven't seen her play in a long time but I remember seeing her and I told Clarissa and her father that she's you and it's it's a, just like anything in life when you know someone's got it, it doesn't matter what it is it's like right. they got it yeah. She's got it. And I, I hope it seems, is she real? Is she still as passionate? Is she like passionate about it? Or is she in the stage where she's like, I don't want to do it? No, she, she still loves it. Uh, the question is if she'll play in college, but she, you know, she's, she needs to be playing more with her level. Yeah. You know, the last two games, she scored two goals Saturday, two goals Sunday. So she, she just needs people to. What's to her rhythm right now playing wise? What was what, volleyball too? Like what days can she play? Well, volleyball, she's playing in high school. Okay. And, and we run into soccer right after volleyball and wow. she's got two travel teams for soccer now. <laughs> so we're going to Melbourne on. Well, Sunday. look it, I got to tell you, like she, i the last thing she wants to do is play soccer on a free day or do anything probably. She needs a rest too, Ma. So she's doing a lot. But anyways, listen, Renee, you rock. I'm excited. I What we'll do too um, is I already told you this once again. Anything I can do to help you love and grow on you. Thank you. Um, I, th this town can be super weird. I, I'm allowed to say that. I've been in this town since like 1986. Wow. Um, it's my home. I, I've scraped my knee on every street you can imagine. Um, I have, I've, I've ran over most of the mailboxes and most of the people that are teachers are now my friends or, you know, like it's, it's a very small, it's growing, but it's a, it can be a weird town. It can be a, a tough town to start something to spread the word and um, anything I can do to help you put you in a good, good position you of meeting good people etc you got a great i mean clarissa's a ball of fire she's going to get you seen but um let's do this i know that we have a tentative still link up for next week anyways why don't we just keep that on the books for okay. now but it's not that's not show that's just that's just high fives and, Am you know, I gonna and hugs you? can i come to you like um i'm uh, i'm flag with beach based yeah so i would yeah, say i think yeah. i want to be in person so we can brainstorm and get hundred you know, percent. So, so we'll, we'll still keep that on the thing, but what I'll do now so that the showcase pretty condensed and we had a great time. If there's, um, <laughs> uh, after I conclude the live, we'll it's going to be, um, we'll let it marinate. I'm going to try to put it on, um, Facebook and we'll just let it marinate. And then is there anything you could think of business centric wise that you want to say that, you know, things that you have anything on the horizon that you'll be somewhere well, that someone can meet you and so not only am I, my mission is to protect our community and move them in the right direction. And I say, you know, have our family move your family, thing, you know. Yep. I also, um, I believe in, if I'm protecting or trying to service our community or people moving, I also want to highlight our, our, our small business owners who keep our community running, who keep the ACs going, who keep the roofers mm -hmm. going who feed your fish, who watch your pets, who, who do our hair. Websites live. Correct.
<laughs> so if you you know you've seen my Instagram and you've seen my Pretty Packers Facebook page, I do weekly business spotlights, and it's not right. you know it's almost like a free. I have seen you do yeah. that and i thought it was amazing Thank yes you. and i taught myself canva i mean that a girl 16 hours straight i did so much espresso and so many five hour energies <laughs> i honestly i had the shakes like like katherine hepburn in in on golden pond right so <laughs> that's an age that we're really aging yeah. I can for the too. millennials but they're the, like who are they well, talking about the loons, remember <laughs> so anyway that's what i was like teaching myself canva and um, it was really, it was really cool. But I, it's a weekly spotlight, and it's there's no competition. We're all in this yeah. together. So mm -hmm. I can spotlight 50 realtors if I want. Right. Because you know what? If you have a broker brokerage open where all realtors come in, it, we're all in it together. We're all here to mm -hmm. refer each other, and it's keeping the bad guys out. Amen. I want to do a commercial with a cape, and like. <laughs> And the little, you got to gotta like get, glasses, so get your, the, the glasses are dope. I like the color. I can't hear without you them. You got to so. do like a mask that matches your glasses with yeah, the red. So I think yep. it's definitely a challenge. <laughs> 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 so, so, you know, that's like, it's really important to me to spotlight and, you know, our, our small business owners. Right. Because we have it rough with inflation, with these bigger mm -hmm. companies making it so much easier for for people just to go there because right. they're so or they're really not because they, they don't care about quality they care yeah. about quantity that's the thing so um i i give credit to him every time i say it there have you met jay shear yet yes i love love jay him. he's a basically i mean i'm i proclaim him as a mentor yeah. of mine he's a great guy he taught me to be relational not transactional yes yes so for so. instance I got a call at 7.30 this morning. It woke me up because I was out a little late last night um, and then went to the Waffle House. And like, a girl. Oh, my God. Chocolate chip waffles, two eggs over easy, and hash browns at 11 o'clock at night. I was like, this is NT. I was like, this is lovely. <laughs> I love it. So I'm going to actually, I'm going to work out later, actually. So that, uh, that'll pay, work out. Burn it that'll, off. Yes. So my point is, um, I forgot my point, but Jay's great. But I just want to help people yeah. live in purpose, and we all help each other. Well, so, but what I want to say is the call I got at seven thirty was it was he's like oh I see that I see someone wrote something about you on Facebook. I was like really? I'm like well could you go back to me and get the name because of course like there's that twenty five dollar referral thing that I do, you know. So um, someone wrote that oh she's really good with seniors or. <sighs> She's she's in there to she she'll do a free consultation right. and she, she she cares, you know. So his wife is very sick. He oh. he has one arm, and he can't pack and he needs help. Wow. So I'm going there wow. tomorrow to do. That's a, a beautiful. Yeah, I love that you're getting like such you unique, and I just use it like the word emotion. Like you're getting emotional type of clientele i love that yeah i like that anyway well, so I, far I, I mean i've only been in a month so we'll hey see. well still i think that's what's crazy is i think like i said i think you once again cliche alert but i think you get what you put out and i think that you have this i mean all women have this beautiful nurturing nesting type of you know flavor but yours is amplified and i think you're gonna start seeing a lot of that like real unique personal touch of people feeling safe with you and comfortable with you and i okay. i once again anything i can do to help emphasize that or amplify that too and, and get that scene because that's i i for the longest time when i first started business i i looked at it thing from a quantitative thing and i was like i need four customers I'm, i need five i need seven and then all of a sudden i was like I don't even know how many customers I have anymore. I just know that I'm paying my bills. And I yeah, I didn't it's look really at not about making so much money to me. Yeah, he means not. I mean, unfortunately, we need money. In order of course, to buy. of course. But yeah. I think I think what's cool is that you're you're putting I have a slogan at the bottom of my uh, proposals. And it says when you give more in value than you do charge and 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 that's what i've learned to do and i i'm i'm like branded as it's funny 
I don't like to bid on big projects where there's like 10 people bidding. Yeah. But one of my jokes that I have when I'm bidding with them, because most of the people that come to me are word of mouth and great people like you. And I don't have to, I don't have to bow too much, which once again, I don't mind bowing, but if it's a bowing situation, I will, and I'm chummy with the person that's like, yo, put in the, the RFP to I'm like, okay. I always joke with them near the end of it. And I go, I'm the cheapest one, ain't I? And they're like, yeah, how'd you know that? I'm like, cause I know. I always know. And I don't do that on purpose. I just authenticity exactly. to the table. And I, I, I don't care that I'm cheese because thank God I don't outsource and I don't have to pay anybody else. But right. I'm not downplaying the people that are charging more. There's maybe they need it or they think that they're worth that. But I can service. I'm, I'm still very handsomely rewarded for the for what I do. And I'm and I value it. And but it's it's nice to be brand almost all my customers, even the big ones, the big corpo scary ones. They're like, I had a guy call me the other day and you know how when corpos change their positions, yeah. the new guy, the vice, he's changing this. And I'm so used to dealing with those, right. a new guy every other oh, month. Like, hi, I'm, I'm Bill. I'm the new guy. Yeah. I'm like, okay, well, the new guy of this particular company is a little grumpy pants and he's like kind of being mean to me. And I take that very well. And the guy was the guy who owns the company was on the call. And as soon as we hung up, he called me because we've been working together for years. And he goes, dude, you handled that so well. And I was like, it's okay. He goes, I don't know what his, so basically the new guy was basically saying I was no good, though the new guy has no power position to do anything to me more than just, he was scrutinizing some stuff. Long story short, the guy goes, you know what I told him when I hung up? I said, what? He goes, find someone cheaper. <laughs> Which I don't want to be branded as a cheap guy, but I didn't. Because the market's blowing up, I mean, people charge an 18K for a website that does one page. I'm, it, Can I just tell you something? I really yeah. have to say thank you because I was swimming upstream the last couple of weeks when I started Pretty Packers. Okay. And okay. I said to Clarissa, I said, if I was back in New York, my shit would be up already. I said, but, you know, I got to deal with, everyone thinks that they're a webmaster because they know how to post on TikTok. No, you're a social media poster, but you're not a, you're not building brands. Everyone thinks they are. And yeah. I, I've been through a few in the one month that I've, and I was getting frustrated because I was like, mean what you say, say what you mean. You charge you, this girl was charging me $50 for editing my logo when she fucked it up in the first place. I'm not paying her. I'm like, I even emailed her. I said, I'm not paying you right. $50 when I had to fix the estimate form that you made for me. Right. I'll tell you though, but you we're we're cut of the same mold and I could tell you yeah. what what's been interesting is it's it's fun to get fun clientele and you've been you're so fun and it thank you for the compliment, but it's been yeah. great to work with you and going to continue to work with you because um I understand your vision and now I understand you even more. And what did I say when we first talked? Don't, if you remember you, about, you, it's all you. Be yourself. And, and I said, we need to get more of you on the site. And we will, we continue. But I had that video, you did. When people help me help them, you got that video, is it up? It's up, we'll change it out. Well, but you're the one that, I ask people sometimes when it comes to a business or a service and this and that and the other, and I say, who's answering the phone or who's gonna be there when they walk in? And right now you're just like me, I'm the guy, you're the gal. And I want people to hear you, I want them to see you. And I have, I've learned this the hard way too. Not everyone wants to sit at our lunch table. No, it's okay. Yeah. Um, we we probably we eat. You know, we no one wants to eat pig's feet with us and red sauce. I, I get it. You do. No, yeah, but I shouldn't be cursing when we're live. No, you, so you can't believe. Can. No, well, yeah, yeah, nay. I I think authenticity is great, and what's, <laughs> you know, we're not giving a speech. We're just talking. If people want to. I like to be as real as possible. I mean, I don't force it, but yeah, if it's natural, would, let it out. I, me in the back oh, of the head if she heard me. Yeah, I mean, yeah, me call. too. My family, as yeah. soon as every time I get done with the show, you know, I'll have. It was, it was me really trying to get what I was feeling. So it's very stressful to have oh, starting a business from a vision, from something in the back of your mind, holding on to it and just putting it out there in the universe for right. a year verbally to giving birth to something. Mm -hmm. Like, like mm -hmm. I sat on my dining room table. I'm in my dining room right now, right? And, and, creating like, like I wanted a character like of me, like, right. you know, the red glasses, my pearls that I never take off my good luck pearls, right? Things like that. And my girlfriend that was here, she's a blessing. 
and she did that with me watching to giving birth and then actually working with it and then just mm -hmm. like having i have i've had three clients so far one, awesome. one was just packing one was pet sitting and the then my one molly who moved to michigan she was packing moving coordinator i got her car transporter from a woman that i've known for over 20 years being in the industry she owns an uh, auto transport company right. so she right. cars and she's down in fort lauderdale but she's all over right. florida the that got picked up yesterday i'm using um Suddeth. So Sherman Reed from Suddeth, I use him. Um, I've collaborated with him. He's a well-respected man in the moving right. industry. He's my long distance move. Then I use Dan and Sons Moving. It's a husband and wife and Chelsea, she owns it and it's a woman owned company. So there's that. I, I listen to her right. when, she, when she gives quotes and it reminds me of me. So she takes the time. She wants to know all the information. Right. They're a lovely, they, they're, they're family, they've got four children. So I've partnered up with them. So it's important to surround yourself with good people that have the same work ethic. So I'm sorry for cursing, but I was really frustrated by, I've spent a lot of time, yeah. right, Clarissa? I was getting really like, I can't do this anymore. It's it's taking me away from what I need to do. Right. Hackers. And so I wanna really thank you for taking charge and just shazamming on in there and and making something within 10 minutes and well you're welcome by that alone i don't feel i have i feel good and i'm like yeah look at my website and it's just a landing page right now but it really has all the information that you need right you and we'll know, get I mean, there i'll keep i'll keep helping you go but once again the common denominator with you is you you have the same growing pains that i have and i want your site to have a lot more of you. And now that we have the Instagram feed, keep pumping out stuff. I, I honestly, it's gonna be annoying. And I, you and I both, we're all guilty. We don't always feel the best. We don't always, but you ever, you ever do the, um, you said something earlier and it made me remind myself of like, you ever seen a photo of yourself like a year ago and that you can remember the time, the yes. place and the whole, and you go, damn, I thought I looked like shit that day. And you go, damn, I look good that day, a year later. So don't ever underestimate yourself. There's a lot of people that um, I try to say, like, you know, don't waste your sexy. Remind yourself that there's people that haven't even seen you yet. And also, too, one of the things I try to remind people is when you're doing your marketing and your post and your and your your posting, and you may think, gosh, I'm really got to be annoying a lot of people. I've posted five, ten yeah. times. I, yes. you, you're don't the the people that are being annoyed aren't your customers anyway. So like. And one of the things I've learned too, and this will go with even this, even if you don't see a lot of hearts and even if you don't even see a lot of views, there's a weird thing going on in the, so, in the, in the social media genre. And I say this as growing up with the internet and living on the internet, it's, it's people, people like and heart and share as if it's like worth more than money. And people are some stingy sons of bitches. Yes, so don't, don't, way i tell my customers and even myself because i can i can put a ton of work and effort and 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 into a into a, a piece of content or a show or and i and, and then like a day or two goes by and i'm like oh man i don't have any likes and then i go to the i go down the street to have a, a cocktail and i got 20 people walking up to me going yo that shit was awesome man and i'm like and they're buying me drinks and they're giving me free food. And I'm like, where the fuck were you? Online? You couldn't fucking heart it. You couldn't share it. So there's this weird genre on internet now is that, and, and part of my vernacular here, but unless you've got ass and titties and you're, and you're showing them provoking, like you ain't really getting shared anyway. So don't, and, and or unless a kitten, unless you're a kitten. Right. You're a kitten. My TikTok video I made about the tank tops. I, I did it. I did it in like a whiny New Jersey, Long Island kind of voice. <laughs> By the way, I like love TikTok. So I start all my videos on TikTok because there's so many tools to use to make it funny and stuff like that. And I said, I love my new t Pretty Packers tank top. Right. They make my boobs look awesome. <laughs> Wait, so you didn't have <laughs> TikTok funny. before you met me? No, you told me I didn't have TikTok. No, I was against it. I was like, you, I am, don't. Seeing the, you see, I mean, it's, it's, it can be a life sucker. So don't go too, too crazy. I'm really it's because it's, it's time consuming. And yeah. you know, I'm really out there trying to make real connections. Right. And I, I 
a breakfast meeting in Flagler Beach yesterday at Sunbro's Cafe. Yeah. And like, oh my God, I had like a chocolate martini at like 11 o'clock in the morning. Girl. That's so what they're for. Delicious. And then I had like a bagel, like I had a bagel with egg and avocado and bacon. It was almost like New York style. It was pretty I good. I love it. So yeah, so we were there for a good three hours and um we're gonna you know it's all about building each other up so yeah. we'll attend events together so it's a girl who's in banal but she has a cleaning business monica's cleaning Love it's it. another girl, you know who's a realtor and she's in the palm coast area and when you when you make connections and you build each other up and you go to networking events together your self-esteem just goes soars oh yeah i mean i walked into the daytona beach home show by myself like a little gangster with with I mean, so funny with all my little bags, yeah. right? I saved myself a thousand dollars by not having to have a table, but I just walked up to everybody and I was like, "What do you do? Oh, you're you're lo you're local. Well, let's get in touch. Let's collaborate. I'll make you a weekly spotlight. It's free." People are like, "Why are you doing that?" I'm like, "Why not? Yeah. You don't have to pay seven hundred dollars to go to a B and I to be a morning meeting at seven thirty in the morning." <laughs> And with all that pressure of if you don't do good, you're you're known as the as the loser in the group. I know. You know I know. A lot of pressure. Like it's a lot of pressure just to get clients for yourself. And now mm -hmm. you're so. How about this? You don't have to leave your home. You don't have to pay anything. But it's a referral incentive. Right. You know what I mean? It, it it keeps us together. It keeps us joined. And then you know, you then you send them a birthday card too with right. the thing. You know, like that. So that's important to me. It really is. I've, I've always been very much into my friends and family are very important, but my business associates are very important as well. And well, they become. I friends. love it. So. You gotta. You. You're. We're, like I said, it's a, it's refreshing to hear. I'm excited to be working with you. I'm excited to, to meet. I can't wait to meet yeah. you. But this was at least. I wanted to do this before pushing it off to get the get some get some grind out there. But let's do this. We'll we'll uh, we did good. See, I told you it goes quick. What? Hour and a half. Boom. <laughs> Oh, wow. All right. Well, wow. So, um, well, look, I, I say it because I mean it. I love you. And I, Clarissa, love you. Love you. Love you. I'm going to take I it. will, um, as soon as we hang up, I'll start. It's going to be live and you can start sharing it. Um, oh, and I'll start doing my, my due diligence of sharing it and networking. And then what we'll do is uh, looking forward to linking up. We'll talk before then, too, about an exact location. But Flagwood Beach will be the, be the hub. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Okay. All right, guys. Well, thank you so much. And I'm sure I'll talk to you soon. Ciao. Ciao. Bye. Thank Bye. You. Bye. Bye.